Hi, this is Tony Henderson Mayers, and I want to thank you for tuning in to Moments of Inspiration, Encouragement, and Prayer. And I know you may be thinking, well, you talk about romantic relationships. Yes, but I also talk about family, friendship, business relationships, relationships with yourself, God, and your money. And this series, Moments of Inspiration and Prayer, um, helps us to get a better relationship with God. And so I hope you enjoyed this portion of my Tony Henderson Mayers page. And without further ado, here is moments of inspiration, encouragement, and prayer. Genesis 41, 53 through 57. On YouTube, it looked like we had our, our whole act together. This, this part won't even be on YouTube, okay? This is all exclusively for you. <laughs> yes, indeedy. All right, so Genesis, we're going to start at verse 53. Did I say Genesis 41? Okay, I think I said that right. Genesis 41, 53 through 57. Now, dear ones, I wish that I could read this whole chapter to you, but it would be quite long. So make sure um, that you take the time to read it uh, yourself for the first time or for many times. Um, make sure you go ahead and read that entire chapter. But basically, in essence, this is a chapter where um, Joseph is brought before the Pharaoh because the Pharaoh has a dream. He has two different dreams and the dreams still mean the same. And it's all about an upcoming famine that is going to come upon the land. And Joseph, ha Joseph has a gift of interpreting dreams. And um, that's a gift we, he and I have, we share. And so um, he interprets this dream and it puts him in a real good position and so we're going to start at verse 50, okay, in the middle of the story, almost like really toward the end of a, of that chapter, okay? So let's look at verse 53. And I'm reading from, I believe, the New International Version. Let me see. Yes, the New International Version. Okay, and it reads like this. The seven years of abundance in Egypt came to an end, and the seven years of famine began. Just as Joseph has said, there was a famine in all the other lands, but in the whole land of Egypt, there was food. When all Egypt began to feel the famine, the people cried to Pharaoh for food. Then Pharaoh told all the Egyptians, go to Joseph and do what he tells you. When the famine had spread over the whole country, Joseph opened up all the storehouses and sold grain to the Egyptians, for the famine was severe throughout Egypt. And all the world came to Egypt to buy grain from Joseph, because the famine was severe everywhere. And so I want to talk a little bit about, um, good to see you, Latanya, good to see you. I want to talk a little bit about how to thrive in a pandemic, how to thrive in a pandemic. Now, before we go, I want to also... Um, reiterate this later on, but I want to say it now because I'm afraid I might forget. For those of you who are not part of our business club, it is called the Hustle Hub. And you just simply put this link into your chat box exactly the way you see it. And for those who are listening, it is bit.ly forward slash Hustle Hub, H-U-S-T-L-E-H-U-B, Hustle Hub, all lowercase letters, bit.ly forward slash Hustle Hub. Those who are watching me via Periscope, the link is in the description, so you can go right there. This is going to help you thrive as we go through this pandemic. And so I want to um, do this lesson with you, but, let, but also if it touches you or you feel like I need to learn how to thrive in all kinds of situations, why don't you join us over there at the Hustle Hub? 
it costs less than 67 cents a day. In other words, it costs basically nothing. <laughs> So why don't you come on down there to the Hustle Hub with us? So we are now going to talk about how to thrive in a pandemic, how to thrive in a pandemic. We just got finished reading Genesis 41, 53 through 57. And I want to turn your attention to some things here in the scripture that is so interesting. Now, in this scripture, they're talking about a famine. OK, and just in case somebody doesn't know what a famine is, that is when there is a lack of food you know, in that country, in on that continent, uh, maybe sometimes throughout the world where there's a hardship in finding food. Uh, possibly the land has dried up. Maybe there's a drought of water. Uh, but in any case, it causes a famine where there's heart, there's a scarcity of food. And as I said in this scripture, um, if you would read, uh, you know, uh, the 41st um, chapter, in its entirety, if you would read all of that, you would find out that Pharaoh had a dream. And um, in his dream, the Lord was basically telling him uh, through the interpretation of, of, of Joseph, he was basically telling him um, that he was going to have a famine in the land. And uh, through Joseph's interpretation, God was setting it up so that um, Joseph would be the person to help him prepare for that famine. Okay to prepare for that famine and to give Pharaoh insight that he should use uh, Joseph. And it's so much in that, guys. It's so much in that scripture in that section that we could go over. Um, it's so much. But I'm trying my best to like just stay within these, uh, these few verses. And we're going to talk about how to thrive in a pandemic. So a famine was very serious. And I think a famine even today would be very serious if we had a scarcity of food. Because food is something that everyone needs to, to live, you know, to exist. Um, but at this point, at this time, if you're listening to me or watching me, we are going through what we call a pandemic, okay? Okay. And, um, and it is, it's, it can, is quite significant. It's something that has not happened in a while and it has, it has its toll on us. Okay. Uh, limited jobs, limited supply, limited, uh, limited, uh, ability to move around. Good to see you, Brittany. Good to see you. A limited uh, ability to move around because we're sheltered in place. And so uh, for many people in this pandemic, their income is dw dw uh, dwindling. Um, their ability to do what they've done before is hampered and limited. Uh, their education is disrupted. Uh, there's so much going on. But what we see in the scriptures, there is always something in the scriptures that we can look at and compare to our own lives. And here, uh, Egypt was about to go into a famine. And so we start our scriptures, scripture off with the verse 53, the seven years of abundance in Egypt came to an end. Dear ones, I'm, I'm here to tell you, you know, and I'm not trying to be negative or any of that, but I'm just trying to be real. Somebody say be real in the chat box. I'm just trying to be real. I'm just trying to tell the truth. And the honest truth is there will be some days that you will be up. And there will some days that you will be down. There are some days you will be in plenty and some days you will be in lack. Okay. <laughs> and, and, and listen, we have ups and downs in, in all of our lives. And if we are so, uh, so religious or so, uh, in a fantasy world, we can, we can let our own selves down because when we are in a fantasy world, like everything's always going to be hunky dory. Everything's going to be great all the time. When we start believing that, that garbage, <laughs> those lies, see lies can be pretty. Lies don't have to be ugly. Lies can come, lies can come in a pretty package. And if we believe those lies that we're not, remember, I taught not too long ago um, from Ecclesiastes that said there's a time and there's a season and a time for everything. So there's going to be a time where you may not have enough. However, if you, like in this scripture, keep your ears attuned to what God is saying, he can prepare you for times of lack. Y'all not hearing me on today. 
you're going to have times that it's going to rain. I mean, here in North Carolina, it's been raining for a lot of days. It was, it's been raining, raining, raining. That's, um, that's unusual for North Carolina. I mean, it's just been raining, 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 but evidently we need the rain. Okay. There are times in your life where you're going to have rain. There's times where you're going to have lack. There's times where you're going to have sorrow. Okay. But you have to prepare for those times. You cannot act like it's never going to happen. I'm telling you how to survive in a pandemic, how to thrive, not even survive, how to thrive in a pandemic. So let's go back to this scripture in verse 53. I love how this section starts because it says the seven years of abundance in Egypt came to an end. That season of abundance had ended for them. It was done. Okay. And I'm here to tell you that there are seasons in your life. Sometimes you will do well. I never forget speaking to someone, they will be nameless. And um, um, basically what they did would be nameless, but they were talking about their career and how their career will always exist. You know, you I try to teach people about, I'm not saying that everybody need to be a business owner. I'm not saying that, but I think everybody ought to have streams of income because it even talks about it in the Bible, okay? They're having various streams of income. We should never rely on one thing. The only thing we should rely on is God himself. And I remember this individual telling me that their career is, their career is going to last forever. We're going to always need blank. We're going to always need this particular career. And I just said one thing. I said, listen, all it takes is one war, one illness, one mishap. And the way you see life now could totally change. But I didn't want to get all into it. So I just said the one statement and kept it moving. But I bet you to this day, they're thinking like, mm, she was right. Because wisdom will tell you. It's not about being right or wrong. It's about wisdom. And wisdom will tell you, you will have ups and you will have downs. So the seven years of abundance in Egypt came to an end. Here's verse 54. It says, and the seven years of famine began just as Joseph had said. And Joseph said it under the unction of the Holy Ghost because God is the one who sent the message. Oh my gosh. And God will send messages in various ways. It'll be through a teaching. It'll be through a sermon. It'll be through reading his word. It will be through an audible voice hearing God speak. It'll be through a revelation or an idea, or you may be sitting and you was thinking about nothing. And all of a sudden you say, you know what? I need, I think I need to save some extra money and put something away. Am I helping anybody today? Y'all interact with me on today because this is so important. If you have not shared this, go ahead and share it because somebody needs to know how to thrive, how to thrive in a pandemic. And so let's go ahead and look at verse 54. So the seven years of famine began. Sometimes you, you don't even know exactly when it happened. Because if you look in his scripture further, in when Joseph interpreted the dream, he never said exactly when it would start. He said you would have seven years of abundance and seven years of famine. Okay. He never said exactly. Like on March 22nd, 1963, he never said a specific date. He just said it will happen according to what the Lord says. And so the famine began. There was famine in all the other lands, but in the whole land of Egypt, there was food. Why was there food? Because in, in this <clears throat> interpretation of the dream, Joseph gave the solution because God is not going to tell you something's going to happen and try to, uh, and, and, and without giving you some sort of way to prepare and to plan. Okay. And so that's why we need to keep our ears to the ground. When the Lord is speaking, we need to listen to what he is saying to us. Okay, so that we can be ready for what is about to occur, what is about to happen. How many know that God is in control of everything? He knows what's getting ready to happen. He knows what's coming down the pipe. He already knows it. It's a mystery to us, but he already knew about this pandemic. And so even though the famine had begun for the whole, for all these other lands around Egypt, Egypt had food when everyone else didn't. Why? Because God had gave a certain plan through Joseph. As Joseph interpreted the dream, he gave him a certain plan on what to do to prepare for this famine. Has God given you something? Has he put something in your spirit? Has he dropped something in your mind that you ought to do to, in order to be prepared for this pandemic? 
Oh, I know it didn't come. We didn't know that it was coming. But many of us, he may have prepared our minds. He may have prepared our spirits. He may have said, oh, yeah, well, you need to put this away and you need to gather up some cans of food and you need to stay in your house and you need to gather some mass and you need to uh, tell, uh, call friends and family and, 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 um, and tell them to stay inside. Or he may have told you to pray or uh, have you pray over your family, your children while they are away. Some of you have grown children. He told you to pray over them. He may have given you an idea long ago, maybe several months back, maybe a year ago to start working in your home and start working on certain projects and things. And now you are thriving because you planned ahead. You listened to what God had to say. Am I helping anybody today? How to, we're talking about here, how to thrive in a pandemic. And so listen, you got to read the chapter to hear all the nuances of what they were told exactly to do, because when they did exactly what Joseph said to do, they had food while other lands did not have food. Verse 55 says, when all Egypt began to feel the famine. So listen, first, the other lands didn't have any food because they, they didn't, they weren't planned. They didn't plan for this famine. They, they weren't ready for this famine. The famine came upon them just like it came upon Egypt. The difference is Egypt was ready and had prepared and had planned, but the other lands did not. So Egypt had food as a result of it. However, look at verse 55. It says, when all Egypt began to feel the famine, in other words, the food began to run out for Egypt. They had food, but then that food began to run out. Oh my gosh. So you may start off and it seems like, okay, I got something, I got it to the side and, and I planned and I prepared, but I'm here to tell you that if you plan and prepare with God, with God's instructions, if you plan and prepare with God's instructions, he is going to sustain you through. He's going to help you thrive through. Let's look at it. He says, um, when all Egypt began to feel the famine, that means that Egypt eventually had no food. The people cried to Pharaoh for food. And so then Pharaoh told all the Egyptians, go to Joseph and do what he tells you. Because Joseph was now second in command in all the land. He was in charge because of this interpretation of the dream, because of the solution that God gave him. He was not afraid to utilize the solution. How many times God has given us a solution? Oh, I'm about to talk to somebody specifically. Y'all better share this because maybe it's not for you. Maybe Maybe it's for somebody else, but how many of you have God, God has given a solution and it's been a great solution. It's a wonderful solution, but you're too afraid to, um, to articulate it. You're too afraid to step out on it. Okay. Okay. God been whispering in some of y'all ears to, um, uh, write books, to start businesses, uh, uh, to create something. Um, somebody, you ain't going to make no money doing that. Why are you doing that? That's just so silly. God been telling you to move to a particular area and all of this. And if you follow through on what God tells you to do, you may not see why he told you to do it at that moment. Everything doesn't happen instantly, dear ones. Everything doesn't happen overnight. Oh, God told me to go back to school and I don't went back to school. Now I got this debt and I can't find a job. And oh my God. But maybe he's preparing you for the time that the pandemic is coming, for the time that the famine is coming, for the time that the rainy day is coming. And then he will utilize what he told you to do and you'll be so happy you did it. Do I have any witnesses? Anybody got a testimony? You can put the testimony right in the chat box. Oh my God. Yes, Lakeisha, God continued to provide us signs to secure us to thrive. Oh my gosh, that is so good right there. And so look at the scripture. Verse 55, when all Egypt began to feel the famine, the people cried to Pharaoh for food. And the Pharaoh told all the Egyptians, go to Joseph and do what he tells you, tell you. And, you know, let me just stop right here. Some of us, we will, um, we will hear God's voice. We will do what he tells us to do. But then when we are to shift it to follow authority, good to see you, Seema. When we are shifted to follow authority, that's where we lose it. Y'all didn't hear me. Y'all didn't hear me. 
some of y'all, especially some of y'all with titles and positions, I want y'all to hear me because some of y'all with titles and positions, oh my gosh, you're going to mess your own self up. You're going to trip your own self up because if the person don't come in the package you expect, if the instructions comes from a mouth of a person who you believe is beneath you or who you think don't have no sense, or she a female, uh, ooh, she black, uh, ooh, he come, he, 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 he live from this side of the track, oh, he ain't even got a degree, how he gonna tell me? We have to learn how to humble ourselves under instruction, because very often when God um, is, wants to help us, very often when he wants to help us, he'll send a person. You on your knees, getting them rusty and nasty, praying to the Lord, hollering and screaming. And that's good. That's fine. But if you're going to do all that hollering and screaming and you're going to mess up your knees and get them all scratched up, I declare when you get up, you ought to listen. Okay. <laughs> you ought to listen. And what happens is, remember Naaman in the Bible, you know, when, when his slave girl told him about, because he wanted to be healed, he had leprosy, and she told him about the man of God. He expected the man of God to come down and, I guess, do a lot of pomp and circumstance and and uh, and um, lay over him and holler or whatever so that he can be made whole, so he could be healed, okay? But he told him to go down and dip himself in the water. And just the fact that the slave girl even told, gave him the next level of where he needed to go. You ever got help from somebody and, and, and it was an unlikely source? You didn't expect it. You didn't know where it was going to come from. That's why you ought to treat everybody right. Huh? You ought to treat everybody right. I remember my husband was in a whole lot of trouble. Oh my gosh, she was in so much trouble. And you know, it was just one of those life experiences. If you got if you have not lived long enough, I'm telling you, there's some times in your life you will go through something and you ain't even do nothing wrong. You're like, what in the world? I try to be nice and kind to everybody, try to obey the laws, and here I am in trouble. And I remember my husband really needed some help. And I went down to a place to go get some help. And they told me I could not take this document because it was private information or whatever, some some stuff. You couldn't take the document. And I needed that document to really help my husband out. And I remember turning around and praying in my under my breath and said, Lord, I don't even know what to do. And I heard somebody say, Mrs. Mayers. Now, if anybody calls me Mrs. Mayers or Miss Henderson, I know they used to be a student. <laughs> and I turned around and she said, I don't know if you remember me, which of course I did. She said, but you got me this job. Oh, God. She said, I overheard the woman saying, <laughs> I overheard the woman saying that you couldn't take this document. And she just slid the document over here. She said, I'll never forget what you did for me because it changed my whole livelihood. Somebody needs to say hallelujah right there. I feel something. And because of that one document, it brought, it broke everything and it opened up a door for us and it solved the problem. <clears throat> I'm here to tell you, you can't get all fruity tooty over how, who helps you or who brings the information to you. They may be somebody that you think is not worthy, but God tends to use people. And he doesn't always use the president of the United States. He doesn't always use somebody who got a doctor in front of their name. We need to shake that off. Oh, I feel something. Y'all need to shake. Go ahead and shake right now. Shake that off. That is other devil. When you think you so high and so holy, they can't nobody help you. God is trying to help you get out of this famine, get out of this pandemic, hush your mouth, humble yourself, and listen to what he has to say through the person he sends. And so in this scripture, we find out that uh, the Pharaoh, oh my gosh, the Pharaoh was humble enough to listen to the instruction of Joseph, who, by the way, he had got up out of prison to come get this man to interpret his dream. I mean, you know, <sighs> mm. wow. You know, you hear a whole lot of bad things about Pharaoh, but this particular Pharaoh, he was humble enough to, to get somebody to help him out. First of all, he had, a, I think it was his, was it a cup bearer or his, uh, uh, or the one that made the bread? I'm not even sure. One of them guys that was in prison with Joseph remembered Joseph and remembered the fact that Joseph could interpret dreams. And the Pharaoh didn't, he didn't turn around and say, don't bring me nobody out of jail. I ain't going to deal with no ex-cons. Forget these ex-cons. Who is he anyway? No, he didn't act like that. He humbled himself and said, bring him here. I need somebody to interpret this dream. And not only that, 
he saw that this man was of God and he had a gifting in him and he had an ability to help him. And so he humbled himself and allowed this man to help him. And I, I keep harping on this right here because I believe somebody's watching me right now. And the reason you in that hot mess right now is because you won't humble yourself. Oh my God. You won't humble yourself, honey. You don't want every, you don't want that person to help you out. You don't want that person to give you instruction. Who are they anyway? They ain't nobody. I got my doctorate degree. They don't know nothing. We need to stop that. Somebody put stop that in the chat box. We need to stop that. I want to say, I see a string of stop that because I want people to look at this broadcast and say, what are they telling me to stop? Let me come in this broadcast and see what that's all about. You need to stop that. Oh my gosh. I don't care who tells me if they're going to help me get out of this, uh, help me thrive in this pandemic. If they're going to help me thrive in this, uh, this famine, I'm going to listen to what they've got to say. Verse 56. When the famine has spread over the whole country. So it went from other lands and then Egypt had food and then it went to Egypt. Okay. So even though they had this dream, even though they listened to the instructions that God, God said to do through Joseph, it came to the point where now they don't have food. Huh? But Pharaoh said, go to Joseph because see, we got a plan. Anybody got a plan for your pandemic? Anybody got a plan for your famine? Anybody got a plan for your rainy day? Anybody got a plan for when things are not going to be all right? I declare that's what I teach in the Hustle Hub. We got to stop feeling all great about the fact I got this high paying job. Ain't nothing going to happen to me. Ain't nobody, nobody, nothing. Listen, your job is your resource, but you need to connect to the source. Your source is God. And it is God, even if you got a job and you're making great money, it's God that's doing that. If you got a business and you're making a little money, that's God who's doing that. Somebody say in the chat box, it's God, it's God, it's God. Oh my goodness. If you believe that, put it's God in the chat box. It's God that's doing that. And so we've got to realize who our source is. And so when the famine, verse 56, had spread over the whole country, Joseph opened up all the storehouses and sold grain to the Egyptians for the famine was severe throughout Egypt. And y'all might've missed that. Once the famine had spread all over the country, whole country, you know, during this pandemic, I had like a whole pantry full of like canned goods. And I hate canned goods. I do. I, I like home cooked food, but I had the cans, the boxes. I know y'all did too. And when my sons were here, because they were here through the, you know, the, the initial part of the pandemic, my sons, they, you know, they wanted to eat through all of that, honey. And I was like, oh, no, no, this right here is for when we completely run out. <laughs> and that that's, that's how Joseph was. He had stored up, and you can look at the details of what the dream was and the details of the technique he used by reading verse 41 yourself, Genesis 41. But what he did is he stored up some. And look, look at verse 56. It says, when the famine had spread over the whole country, Joseph opened up all the storehouses and sold grain to the Egyptian. He had a whole lot of storehouses. He had a whole lot of stuff stacked away and put away. Oh my goodness. Good to see you, Angie. Good to see you. He had a whole lot of stuff stacked away and put away. I wonder if you guys have anything stacked away and put away during this pandemic, during the famines of your life, during the rainy days of your life. What have you rolled back and put away? You see a squirrel do this all the time. The entire spring season, all they do is run around and get nuts and put the nuts in different parts of the earth, the ground, the trees, what have you, so that they will have plenty during winter. And if a squirrel can do that, how come we as humans can't do that? Oh my gosh, I'm about to end this. I'm about to end this. But did you also see in verse 56, here we go. Joseph opened up all the storehouses and sold. Somebody say sold. Put that in bold letters, sold, S-O-L-D, in the chat box. He opened up all the storehouses and sold grain to the Egyptians for the famine was severe throughout Egypt. Now, I know some of you Christians going to be like, oh, God, that ain't even holy, honey. That ain't even holy. We ought to been giving that grain to the poor. We ought to been, been helping people. We ought to been giving it to the church. We ought to 
give it to the pastor. We ought to give it to the lame and the sick and the brokenhearted. We ought to have been giving that grain away, giving it, giving it, giving it. And that's okay to give it. It's okay to give some. But here we saw Joseph sold it. Oh, my gosh. See, some of us will just survive a famine, survive a pandemic. But I'm here to say I'm one of the thriving ones. <laughs> We're going to thrive in this famine, in this pandemic. He sold that. Oh, my goodness. He sold that. And see, he had a willing base. This is what I would be teaching in my hustle hub, in my business club. This is what I'd be teaching. He had a willing base of people who were ready to buy that grain. They had food. Now, they ain't say he upped the price and he sold it so high they couldn't survive. No, he didn't do that. He didn't do that. He sold it at a fair price, but he sold it. And so not only did they put something away for a rainy day, they put something away that they could sell that so that they can continue to thrive so that they could take that resources, the money and put it into other things so they can continue to thrive and do well. Oh my goodness. Somebody missed that on the day. Somebody missed that. You so busy just giving it all away, but he sold it. And verse 57 says, and all the world, somebody put all the world, came to Egypt to buy grain from Joseph because the famine was severe everywhere. Where? So not only did Egypt buy, but all the world, people came from here, near and far to buy the grain. Now, how many know that Egypt must have did very well? Oh, they did very well. They didn't just survive in a famine but they thrive. That is what we need to do in this pandemic. We don't need to just survive. We It's okay. It's okay to thrive. It's all right to thrive. Some of you need to be writing your books during this pandemic. Some of y'all need to be um, um, encouraging people. Some of you have products and services. Some of you need to go through school or what have you. You ought not be just sitting there being nervous and, oh, Jesus, when are we going to get out of this? And, oh, Lord, how are we going to make it? And, oh, Jesus, <laughs> what are we going to do, Lord? What are we going to do? You ought to do something. Whatever he's putting in your spirit to do, you ought to do it right now. You ought to plan because you're not going to be in a pandemic always. They weren't in a famine always. When you read that scripture, you'll find that they had seven years of plenty and seven years of famine. And so the famine will end. The pandemic will end. But how you come out this pandemic will mean a whole lot of how you spent your time through the pandemic. Did you plan? Did you build yourself up? Did you add to? Yes, you ought to see about people. You ought to um, encourage people. You ought to do for people. But what are you doing to build yourself back up? Because when we come out of this pandemic, honey, when we come out of this pandemic, it could be seven more years of fat for you, or it can be seven more years of famine. <laughs> so what are you doing during this time? So we're going to get ready to go ahead and pray. Um, but before we do, I want to look and see, um, cause last couple of weeks I had not put up my, um, prayer, my prayer requests, uh, thing on Facebook. So I'm going to look and see if we had any advanced prayer requests, but if not, I will be praying for you live on this broadcast. Um, let me see. Okay. Let me see if I can pull this up. If anybody has prayer requests. Hmm. No, I don't see any pre-planned ones. I know I'll probably get some on tonight, but that's okay because we got enough to pray for, okay? We got a whole lot to pray for. Yes, indeed. So let's go ahead and go before the Lord in prayer. Then I'm going to give you a word of encouragement, and then we're going to uh, move on. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we just bless you. We honor you. We lift you up. God, we just love you. We praise you. And Father God, we ask, first of all, that you forgive us for all that we have done wrong, especially when we have not planned in a pandemic, if we're not thriving in a pandemic, if we have not listened to you during this pandemic, if we have not um, um, submitted and humbled ourselves as you, as you send people to speak into our lives or to help us or to, um, to um, impart to us, God, forgive us. Help us not to complain during this pandemic, but to plan, 
but to, but to do the things that you've given our hands to do so that we would be able to thrive during this pandemic. Um, Lord, we just pray, oh God, that you would increase our faith, that you would increase our faith, that we will believe totally in you for your protection, for, for your, um, for your pro um, prosperity, for, for your provisions. God, we trust you and we honor you. Anybody trust God on today? God, we just ask that you forgive us um, for um, not just totally trusting in you, you know, not, not, not knowing that you um, have us and not knowing that you uh, know the end from the beginning. God, forgive us. Father God, we thank you for today. We thank you for life. We thank you for strength. We thank you that we are in our right mind on today. We thank you, oh God, for blessing us and keeping us. The very fact that we can hear this prayer knows that you have been good to us. We thank you for keeping our children, our spouses, oh God. We thank you for providing food for us each and every day, clothing, shelter. And God, for those of us who may be suffering, oh God, God, we pray for them that you will bring us, bring um, them to us so that we may serve them because we are your, um, we are your hands and feet here on the earth. We are your heart and we are your, um, your example of your love, oh God, and mercy. So God, help us to be loving and to be kind and to show God's love in everything that we do, oh God. God, we pray for those who are bereaved. We pray for those who um, don't have all the things that they need, oh God. We pray, oh God, that you connect them with one of us, one of your soldiers, oh God, so that we may serve them in the way that you would have us to do. God, we um, pray for every broken heart, every broken spirit, every worried spirit in the name of Jesus. God, we pray that each and every person on this broadcast, those who are listening uh, to the broadcast, that they will thrive and not survive during this pandemic. Not only survive, but they will thrive, oh God, in the name of Jesus. God, we pray for every mother. Go ahead and put your prayer requests up if you have one at this time. We pray for every mother on this broadcast. We pray for every father, all of those who are um, teaching their children at home, oh God. We pray that you give them patience, witty ideas, creativity. We pray that you bring the family closer and closer together, oh God. God, we pray for every married couple that you will strengthen the marriage, oh God, in the name of Jesus. We pray for every teacher, for every uh, first responder, for every frontline worker, oh God, has been working through this pandemic. Protect them. Every nurse, every doctor, protect them, oh God, from sickness and disease, God. Protect them. Um, and their families, oh God, as they serve us so well, God, put your loving arms around them and God, um, protect them in the name of Jesus. God, we pray for our troops who some of them who are still away from home, even as we're going through this pandemic. God, protect them, oh God, in the name of Jesus, God, we pray. God, we pray for every business. We pray increase and ideas and solutions, oh God, in the name of Jesus, every unemployed person. God, we bring them before you, oh God, knowing that you can bless them with resources and jobs and income. It doesn't even have to be a nine to five job, God. Whatever way you want to bless us, we'll be satisfied. God, we pray for each and every person who may be brokenhearted or nervous or worried or what have you. We pray for you. In the name of Jesus, go ahead and put your prayer request one more time before I end this prayer. God, we pray. Oh God, first of all, that this pandemic will end soon in the time that you have allotted, oh God, and that whatever needs to be done will be done and done well. God, we trust you and we bless you and we honor you. God, we pray for um, all of our leaders in this land, our political leaders, leaders of the family, leaders in, ch in, in churches, leaders in home, leaders um, um, in organizations. We pray for leaders everywhere that you touch them, that they will open their ears and eyes to you. God, we pray for all of our world leaders, our president. God, that you would give them wisdom and guidance and knowledge. God, we pray during this voting season, oh God, that people will not stay home and not vote, but that you will give them wisdom. Give them, give, don't even let them rest, oh God, until they feel like I got to get up and I've got to vote. I've got to show, I've got to show and say and give my voice, oh God, to the situation. In the name of Jesus, God, we pray that every person on this earth now will turn their heart towards you. We pray for their salvation in the name of Jesus, that they will come to know you, 
oh God, because time is winding up and your word is going forth all over the world. So we pray for the salvation of your people in the name of Jesus. And for anyone who had a prayer request that possibly was too private to put up through the chat box or too personal to share with anyone, God, you know all about it. You said this poor man cried and the Lord heard him and delivered him out of all of his troubles. And God, we know that you hear them and that you care about them. And so God, we put their prayer request before you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. So dear ones, thank you so much for tuning in. But before you go, I definitely want to give you some words of encouragement (laughs) before you go. And so first of all, I want to thank each and every one of you for listening to moments of inspiration, encouragement, and prayer on YouTube. We do all right, <laughs> but it's Facebook Live and Periscope that you guys like knock the numbers like out of the park. I mean, you guys, Periscope and Facebook Live and Twitter, y'all okay too. Thank you. <laughs> I thank you, whatever you do. But we just thank you guys for just thousands and thousands of views because they are on different platforms. And we thank you so much for all of the shares. You guys are amazing. We thank you so very much for that. And so um, I just want to encourage you that some of you may be getting a little antsy. And I have to remember that because, the you know, the Lord has been blessing us so much. I enjoy, you know, being home. I had the family. Both the boys are now back at school. And I had a little lump in my stomach. Okay. I was, I was cool, calm and collected through this whole thing until my babies had to go back. I, especially my youngest. I was like, oh God. But, um, but I know that God is in control and I have to remind myself that some people are really nervous and shaking and stuff. And that doesn't mean because everything's going well with us. Okay. That doesn't mean that I just have joy because I trust God and I love him and I trust him and he has never let me down. Tracy, he's never let me down, girl. (laughs) And so I trust him. And so I have to remember that some people are really nervous and um, shaken up about this whole thing. But let me just suggest this to you. First of all, begin to count your blessings. Remember that back in the day? Some of y'all may remember them singing that song, count your blessings and name them one by one. Start counting your blessings. Start counting what is going right in your life and begin to thank God for that. And it just gives you a whole nother outlook on life because things could be far worse. We could be going through a famine. We could be going through those situations, but the Lord has blessed us. And many people are complaining and you live in awesome homes, wonderful homes, huge square footage and got everything you want in your refrigerator and and your light bill is on and, and, and you're able and you're comfortable. You got air conditioned. Oh my gosh. You know, if if I told y'all some stuff that has happened to me, you would be so shocked, but I'm just saying little stuff that we, we take for granted. You got air conditioning in North Carolina is hot. Okay. And you got air conditioning. You got more food than you need. Truth be told, you need to stop eating because some of y'all going to roll out of this pandemic. (laughs) You're not going to walk out. You're going to roll out. Oh my gosh. And see, listen, we got to learn how to thank God for everything. Nothing is too small to thank God for. Hmm. You can see, you can hear some of us, some of us didn't have to take a a COVID-19 test. We didn't even have to take one. Some of us had symptoms and found out we had indigestion. We, you know, we need to thank God for everything, for all that he has done. He is good. I, that's right, sweet Reese. Why don't y'all just throw your hands up and begin to praise God? Why don't you begin to honor him? Because he didn't have to do it. You don't have to be healthy. You don't have to be strong. And some, bless God, some, some, of, some of these people, God bless them, have had symptoms of COVID-19 and they still are having symptoms. It's gone and they still have, some of them have lost, uh, the organs have shut down on them. And look how God has protected you and kept you. Some people are running out of food and running out of medicine. They don't know how, what they're going to do, but look how God has blessed you. We have to learn how to honor God and thank him for all that he's done. But maybe you're watching me and you, you don't even know 
about this God thing. You don't even have a connection with God. And I'm going to tell you the simplest, easiest way to get in connection with God. And first, you've got to believe in his son, Jesus Christ. You've got to believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross for our sins. Okay. You got to believe that he is the son of God. You've got to believe that God raised him from the dead. When he died, he raised him from the dead. He died for our sins and he raised them for the dead, from the dead. Now you may say, what sins? What sins do I have? You got to believe, first of all, that we are not perfect, that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. That means we all have made mistakes. Okay. I know that there's some humans out here who think they have made a mistake, but guess what? Soon as you say that, you a liar. So you just made a mistake. <laughs> and so we to learn how to trust and believe God. So when you believe that Jesus Christ is God's son, that he died on the cross for our sins and that God raised him from the dead, if you believe that and you believe that you have sinned and you need Jesus to save you, you are what we call a Christian. So if you prayed that, if you believe that, say it out loud and then, hey, you're a Christian, welcome. <laughs> and so then you can have the joy that I have, the same kind of joy, maybe even more. You can have the trust and faith and know that God has everything under control. Now, listen, I've been with him for a long time. Okay. I've been in church all my life, literally all my life. Okay. Father preacher. And um, after he preached like his third sermon that day, remember back in the day, you have like three services. He preached his third sermon that day. My mother went into labor and I, I that was a Sunday. So I was respectful enough to be born after the services and on Monday morning. Okay. <laughs> And I, you know, I love church. I love being there, but I love God more. I love his people. Okay. And so you don't get this way just from overnight. You get this from, from years of being with him. But I always did love him because as a seven-year-old, when I accepted him as my savior, he proved to me at that age, I could depend on him. And I've been through some serious stuff some serious stuff. And I, the only person I could trust was him. The only person I could depend because I figured my mother and father was supposed to be trustworthy. They're supposed to be loving. Okay. And I know that God is a savior. I know that he is a best friend. I know that he is a provider. I know he is a healer. Okay. That's not something I got to look up and I got to figure out. I know it because I done went through it. I lived through it. Yes, indeed. We thank him for all that he has done. And you know what, Lakeisha? We thank him for his character. Because he's not wishy-washy. He's not like man. He's not like some of these leaders that we got now. You tweeting in the middle of the night and first you with me. And as soon as I walk out the door, you against me. Okay. He's not funny acting like, oh, you black, so I don't like you. No, he made us the way he is. And I ain't black. I'm tan, y'all. And I'm still tanning. Look how much I'm tanning. Y'all see that <laughs> tan lines, <style>. y'all. <laughs> Honey, listen, God designed me and he made me and he doesn't make any mistakes. He made you and he didn't make any mistakes. And so that's why I love God because he is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Yes, that's it. Read his word daily. Stay in prayer. Trust him always. That's what Sweet Reese said. That's it. That is it. Yes, indeed. At the tender age of seven, when I needed him most, when I needed him most, when I felt like my life was not worth living, y'all not listening to me. When I was ready to give up and throw in the towel, that's how I was going through stuff so bad at seven. That's why I can understand when these babies are going through. And that's why I can speak boldly and can care less what you got to say. I can care less how much money you got because I grew up in affluence. I care less how much money you got. It don't phase me. I don't care how many degrees you got because I got five of my own. <laughs> Anything you want to put way before me, I could care less, honey. I'm going to tell you, Jesus lives and he is the king of kings and the Lord of lords. And listen, when you down and out, you better dial Jesus. You better dial him. You better learn how to call him if you need him and you're going to need him. It doesn't matter how many degrees you got. It doesn't matter what position you have, how much money you have. You need a savior and you need God. And this pandemic is showing people. As I alluded to earlier, when I had a conversation with this person who was saying their job, if they're going to always have this job, 
They got the job. They still got the job, honey. They overworked and underpaid. And if we keep going this way, we have a war or anything else, won't nobody have no jobs. And who are you going to cry to? Who are you going to reach out to? You're going to reach to God because he's the only one who can change the situation. He's the only one who can bring you through the situation. He's the only one who can bring you through the circumstance. So don't feel down and don't feel out. If you feel alone, honey, learn how to get on a Zoom call. Find out from one of us how to talk to one. Reach out to each one of us. Let's help each other. Let's love on each other. Let's be there for one another. And God is going to bring us through. And we're going to look back and we're going to tell our grandchildren and our great grands. Yes, I thrived through that pandemic. I got my degree during that pandemic. I started my business. I increased my um my resources in the pandemic. Look how many books I wrote in this pandemic. Look what I did during this pandemic. I didn't just survive, but I thrived. Yes, indeed. Yes, yeah, Psalm 91, honey, he will cover us with his feathers. We thank God so much for that. Well, dear ones, looks like I got to go. <laughs> Time goes by so quick. But remember, you can visit me on the web at www.wisecourtship.com. I'm on social media just about everywhere as Wise Courtship or Tony Henderson Mayers. All you have to do is Google me. Just know that I love you and there's nothing you can do about it. And in this day and age of alternative facts, things spinning way out of control, God is still in control. He still sits on his throne. And until Jesus comes back, that's right. We got to learn to watch, fight, and pray. Take care. Well, hello there, each and every one of you. Thank you so much for tuning in. Make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, and ring that bell. Click it for me so that you will know anytime I upload a new video.